Number 13, assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the molar solubility of each of the following from its solubility product. And then we have the solid Hg2I2. I know that this is a solid starting off because we're dealing with KSPs. Since this number is so, so, so small, that means that at equilibrium, not a lot of the solid is going to be dissolved into its aqueous ions. So, that's my little thing about that. <laughs> but we have to basically find the molar solubility from the solubility product. Keep in mind that the solubility product is KSP. So I went in the back of the textbook to find that number out for you guys. But with every KSP comes a balanced equation. So we have to write the balanced equation for HG2I2. So we started off with the solid that they gave us, HG2I2, and that's a solid. This will come to equilibrium, because we're dealing with K values, to the two ions. But what are the two ions in HG2I2? Well, this one's a little tricky, because if I take this two and I raise it up to the iodine, that will tell me that the iodine is a negative two charge. And iodine, being a halogen, never is a negative two charge. So that means that this mercury has to be the polyatomic, HG2. There was only one HD2. So I know that I have my polyatomic HD2 plus my iodine. We can get the charges now by taking the one and the two and crisscrossing them up. So that would say that the iodine is the negative one and the HD2, the two crisscrosses up telling me that that was a plus two. And since I have charges, that's aqueous. And now we just have to make sure that it's balanced. But I have one HD2, one HD2, but I have two iodines. So I do have to put a two in front of the I. And now that's my balanced equation, which I'm going to put off to the side for now. But I will use this to get the general KSP formula. Remember, the general KSP formula is this one right here. It's just equal to the concentration of the products raised to the coefficients. Only products because your reactants are solids in KSPs. No solids allowed. So, KSP equals the concentration of the Hg2, 2 plus, times the concentration of the I minus. But remember, you have to raise it to the coefficients. There was no coefficient in front of the Hg2, that means that there was one of them. So you could raise this one to the first, but that's going to be the same number. But for the I, you definitely have to raise it to the second power because there was a two coefficient here. Now, I know the KSP number. That's 4.5 times 10 to the negative 29th. But I don't know what these concentrations are. So I'm going to have to use variables. We go back to the balanced equation to write our variables. Let's pick X. So I'm going to say I don't know what this concentration is at equilibrium. So I'm going to say X. And it just follows with the coefficient. So technically this would have been 1X, but 1 times X is itself. So I'm just going to leave it as X. But since this is a 1 to 2 relationship, this would have to be 2 times as much. So this would be 2X because the 2 follows with the X value. And now these are the values that we're going to plug in into this expression. So the HD2, 2 plus is an X. The I minus is the 2X. So I have 4.5 times 10 to the negative 29th equals X times 2X, and that's all squared. Let's combat the 2x squared. Remember, 2x squared just means that you have two 2x's, two and they're being multiplied by each other. So 2 times 2 is 4. I have two total x's here, 1 and 1. So that makes two x's. That's x squared. So I can just erase all this and say that that is the same as 4x squared. But now I have one more x to come together. So 1x with a combination of 2 
1 plus 2 is a total of 3x's. So I have 4.5 times 10 to the negative 29th equals 4x cubed. And now we just go back to algebra. We're going to divide each by 4. And let's see what that is. So 4.5 times 10 to the negative 29th divided by 4. I get 1.125 times 10 to the negative 29th, and that equals x cubed. So I can do the cube root on the calculator. That would be the inverse of cubing. But just know that the cube root is the same as raising this to the 1 third. You're basically flipping this fraction. This was 3 over 1, so you could raise it to the 1 over 3. Me personally, that's what I like to use. Uh, but you could use the cube root, that's fine with me. And now let's see, x equals this number raised to the one-third. Uh, we'll do, I guess, two sig figs. So 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative tenth, and that's molarity. Now keep in mind that we're looking for molar solubility, right? And molar solubility is always talking about the initial compound, so the Hg2I2. But just know, in your balanced equation, there's always going to be just one of these in the beginning. So you could think of this as like 1x. So the molar solubility is always going to just equal the x value. So 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 10th, molarity of the Hg2 I2, and that is the final answer. That's the molar solubility. Okie dokie. So I really hope uh, this helps. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. I hope you all are having a great day. You're doing well. Um, keep studying hard. Good luck on your tests and quizzes, and I will see you in future lessons. Okay, bye-bye.